<laughs> okay, yes, I'm back. Hello, hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to Pixel number 13. Um, welcome to our stream. Me, Akan Karagets, um, Xi Ding, and Thomas Moore. Um, to our talk today, and our talk uh, very briefly will basically include how to um, digitally render a painting, uh, different techniques. You will have one, one and the same character uh, painted basically by three artists and rendered by three artists. And uh, this will be a sped up video and uh, three times. And uh, we will have um, easy going and fun. And uh, hopefully we'll, we will get some, some ticks, tips and techniques out of it. Uh, it won't be, I think, an in-depth rendering video because this would take a long, longer time for, for everybody of us. But it, since we have three different approaches, I think it's, will be, will, our hope is that it's very beneficial for you to watch and, and to see. And at the end of the day, it should be fun. We will, we will talk and get loose. Um, and yeah, and uh, maybe I start with introducing myself and... Um, Afterwards, I give the words to the other two speakers. Um, let me share my screen very quickly. Uh, so yeah, my name is Akin Kagels. Uh, I'm a concept artist slash illustrator. And uh, I'm, I'm working in the industry um, for over 10 years now, and uh, mainly for games and uh, animation. Uh, and currently, I'm working as an art director at Rare Earth Games. Um, um, and now I give the word to Xi. I'm actually a character artist. Uh, before the pandemic, I do lots of live caricatures. So I draw lots of faces. But I also do some illustrations uh, with caricatures. And today I'm going to show you how I would approach uh, rendering a character. Now, uh, Thomas, would you introduce yourself as well? Um, hey guys, I'm Thomas, Thomas Moore. Um, you guessed it. I'm also an illustrator. I do mostly do a lot of uh, advertising stuff, some concept art for movies, games, did some uh, game covers uh, and all all different stuff. Doing it for 10 years now already. Uh, yeah, let's get into it. Uh, Thomas, before you start, uh, maybe show us. Uh, you told us that you use Blender 3D to create okay. some of the illustrations. Which yeah, ones um, here are? Um, they are, yeah. Um, recently started using Blender. Uh, for example, that one. The characters uh, are, of course, painted, but the background and uh, the trees and stuff, it's all done in Blender. Ah, uh, yeah, the, the, the bridge is done in Blender, and the, the zombies are Blender. All the background is basically Blender, and the, the plants you see down here. Um, so you could have, could have it on different la layers and everything. Oh, cool. How, nice. how long does it take you to create a scene like this? I have to say, it's uh, that's the thing. Here is that's all Blender and then painted over in Photoshop. Um, uh, it's hard to say it's different, but uh, sometimes it's a lot of work. For if you see here this this shop, I did because I didn't want to have any copyright uh, problems. I, I created all this this um, mm. these labels uh, mm. that took quite some time, but then. The good stuff about it is I, had, I used that shop for five shots or something like that. Um, and then I didn't have to redo it again. So that took quite some time, maybe two days or something like that. Uh, the background for that one was done in half a day or something. So it's it's quite quick But once you get into it. Uh, how about uh, this, uh, where, where your pointer is at? These that two one? mice, yes. Yeah, is they're... It no, that's that's uh, also done. That's basically how I did the character. I will show you oh, today. Wow. Uh, it's, cool. Uh, this looks so three D. Yeah, there. Uh, thank you. <laughs> did oh, everybody loves them? Yeah. Um, yeah. Cool. Some they are all basically done in the same way. Mm -hmm. Where's uh, that? Okay, that one not. Okay. But that one too. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Cool. Very nice. Cool. I, I want to learn learn Blender as well. So. Well, it's I gotta tell you, it's uh, it's. Uh, it's great right now. Blender is a fantastic program, and it's free, mm -hmm. and it's you can do everything in there. It's it's really great. So you're not uh, using Blender to sculpt characters. For sculpting, I don't use Blender. I use 3D Code. 
I like that. You can uh, cut, yeah. cut into everything and uh, it's, it's voxel based. So it's, mm -hmm. that's quite a nice program. Mm -hmm. um, it's a little buggy, <laughs> but still great program for sculpting and everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cool. Uh, I think now <laughs> we can start uh, showing our rendering process. Yeah, let's do that. Uh, okay. who, who wants to be the first? Uh, yeah, come. Um, I, I really don't care. Well, whatever you want yeah, Yes, please. Is yes, please. Uh, yeah. This character was designed by Aircon. We, we took the topic of the Facebook character design challenge group. It's called uh, Fox Adventurer. Maybe let Aircon first start rendering this character. Uh, thank you. Uh, well, yeah, first of all, I think the, the main thing that I want to say is this was more like a hybrid thing because if I would go really detailed in rendering, it would be, I would basically take more time to do it. It was a hybrid between doing, trying to render and, and trying to design a character. <laughs> it, was, it, was a, it was a weird thing. Anyway, so this is, this is the line work, the base uh, for it. I, I personally like to have a line work uh, before I start coloring, usually. And uh, yeah, what I do first is basically blocking in all the colors. Uh, as you can see here, and what I tried here to just uh, um, while blocking, I was thinking about um, complementary colors or complementary color um, schemes. If you think about the color wheel, you will have colors which are complementary to each other or more or less in the same um, same area, and so you have, for example, uh, the orange against the green, orange reddish against the cool green, I would say, and uh, the yellow back against the purple-ish um, pants. So you have four different colors and they, uh, two of them are complementary to each other, which I thought would be probably too much because the shapes are very bold, like they, they take up the same size on the character, more or less. Orange is a ball shape, green is a ball shape. So I was a bit uh, worried that it becomes too much, um, but uh, it's it worked okay-ish. Um, Do you always yeah. use this kind of color scheme? No, no, no. I usually, I I mean, you it, every character is different, as you know, uh, mm -hmm. and and the but I found um, com complementary colors are. Um, uh, usually working nicely for the eye, for the viewer. They, um, but mm -hmm. you can't use always complementary because you have different characters also in the game or in the movie, and mm -hmm. they have to work with each other also. So uh, that, that's it's not, yeah, not yeah. really... Um, mm -hmm. After blocking in, um, you can let the video run if you want to. Um, um, basically, I'm treating... Uh, I'm going in every each layer and um, trying to um, render it as the simplest, simplest form I can identify. The tail is basically mm -hmm. a tube. And same for the coat, actually. If you think about the uh, cone or two cones, mm -hmm. like one on the bottom and one on the top. But really, um, if I would do a really tight rendering, uh, which would take more time, I would try to make sure that I have a accurate lighting or as accurate as I can 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 get from my imagination. Mm -hmm. But in this case, since I know I, I won't um, have so much time, maybe a half day or whatever it takes, uh, depending on the character to render it, I'm more concerned about showing form, like just, just making sure that the form is readable. Mm -hmm. And if it's somewhere not following a, a a logic like the light is coming exactly from from the left corner and actually you would have a cast shutter on the on the tail or whatever something like that mm -hmm. i ignore some of that just to make sure that the form is readable so mm -hmm. uh, this is something it's maybe useful to know for for some some students um uh you can do the same thing if you have flat colors and do just a multiply shadow shadow layer just to show form on top of everything. 
Mm -hmm. um, I tend to ignore accurate, extremely accurate lighting because it's more the most important thing if I'm doing, for example, concept art, or the first pass is that is readable for the viewer. So mm -hmm. that, that he gets what it is. So and and there I, I I'm not really concerned about extremely accurate lighting or something like that. So that's maybe useful useful to know. So it's not uh it's rather a convention for concept design that you don't use too much lighting. You just I use a normal it, it really completely depends on what it is. I mean it's the if it's the first iteration for a character design, they are usually very quick. Maybe it's just a line work, maybe just grayscale, mm. maybe just uh, so um but if if it if it I mean if it has to uh, uh, go down the timeline to the 3D modeler, and uh, um, and this depends also again on the 3D modeler, uh, you have to look how how much information is useful and how much information can I give him. And and the next factor is as always time. How much time do I have actually to work on the character? So it, I I choose with in regards to thinking what time I have and uh, what is needed and, and trying basically the best what I can deliver in the time. So that's, that's basically the mindset, but mm -hmm. it changes really completely from character to character. Usually for a concept artist, I think it's good that you can do everything to a certain degree, like, because that makes you basically more versatile too. Mm -hmm. So, and, and this will help you to get maybe more jobs <laughs> at the mm -hmm. end. And, um, so you, sh you should be able to paint and you should be able to draw. Uh, by paint, you mean rendering, and by yeah, draw, you mean design? Yeah, rendering, like rendering something realistically or, or as accurately showing form, understanding the form. And that's actually an important point because all the rendering techniques you can think of, like I, I, could, I could and I will talk maybe like now for, uh, on some places I use here occlusion shadow. Google who don't people who don't know what it is should should basically Google it up and then they will see. <laughs> uh, basically, mm -hmm. if two planes meet each other like a corner and the light falls off, the place where the light hits the le the, the least amount of, of of light which comes there, that's called the occlusion shadow. Or I'm not a te I, I have no not the understanding of technically or scientifically how it works. I, I, I can't give you that, but the basic understanding is where the light hits less, there is the occlusion. Um, for example, like here on the bottom of the neck, where mm -hmm. it goes into the shirt or uh, the inside of the jacket on his left side, something like that. Um, so, the, but the main thing, what uh, beginner, be or uh, beginners or students should understand is uh, you can learn like how to use the brush or how to you use so yes um, first the soft brush then the hard brush and you can blend it together but it won't help you unless you you understand what you're painting yeah so, yeah. so if, if you don't get the uh, can't think a little bit in 3d space if you if you if you are yeah. not able to to identify the form what you are rendering, uh, all the techniques are useless for you. Or I, I would say useless because you don't know how to render it. You don't know how to how to apply it. Uh, and for me, that's my personal opinion, and it's not the truth. But for me, it's 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 true, very true. Um, how you learn forms and and construct stuff. Is mm -hmm. by drawing, yeah, mostly. So, yeah. So I would I would highly recommend drawing exercises to to understand perspective. So the fundamentals are basically perspective, right? And mm -hmm. how to construct stuff, what whatever it is. And if you don't know perspective, well, you will have a hard time probably to, to construct stuff. Um, and then, I mean, uh, then it becomes basically studying the object because I, I never painted a fox before and I actually don't know how a fox looked mm -hmm. like. I, I mm -hmm. pull up some references, but since I, I, I'm, I have some fundamentals like perspective, 
I can break down the shapes in tubes, this and this, and, and, and you know, tubes, mm -hmm. tubes, whatever, and, mm -hmm. and try to uh, uh, identify the separate parts and put it together. Uh, same goes for human anatomy. Uh, if I would try to paint or draw a giraffe now for my head, it would go probably terribly wrong because I, I don't know mm -hmm. <laughs> how a giraffe looks like. So, um, so yeah, it's just was a longer side note, but um, yeah, the thing is, you need to. I, I personally need a lot of references, I, it, but it, the thing is, uh, you don't f always or hardly ever find the references that really are exactly what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. So you find a reference and then you need your base knowledge to use that reference for the thing you're doing. You have to fill out the gaps that's, that are not in the reference with uh, your knowledge, your base knowledge. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I agree, absolutely. So, um, yeah, I mean, regarding this image now, so what I did there was treating each part as simple as possible, uh, throwing in some occlusion in the occlusion areas or ambient occlusion, however you would want to call it, and then doing uh, a question: little... How do you pick the color uh, for the ambient occlusion? Uh, I noticed that oh. you paint everything on one layer. Yeah, oh, you're, that, no, you're not using multiplier or anything. Oh, oh that's 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 actually a, a interesting and, and good question. Maybe it's it's helpful for some people. So I also use sometimes multiply or 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 overlay for lights and stuff. Um, but uh, in 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 this case, uh, what I do is basically picking up the base color and mm -hmm. especially for the occlusion now um, going uh, darker in value and also higher in saturation always slightly um, so you and go what, bottom and then go right okay. exactly and, and what <clears throat> and, and, and what I what is interesting is um, Multiply has the effect. If you if you go for shadow areas, usually multiply. You most people pick cold blue, cold colors they, it, because it works good, right? So to to imply shadow, and and there it's not a rule what I'm saying right now. It's just what what I, what I have seen is or what I experienced for myself is if I use occlusion shadow, and I'm making a um um I want to make an um appealing or or Appealing is such a bad word, but um, uh, a character who looks nice to the audience. Maybe it's any for animation or whatever. It's mm -hmm. better to use wa warm color for occlusion. For occlusion, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, because uh, for for example, for the red fur, I like that it, it goes basically more saturated, more reddish, and and more darker. Uh, <laughs> So it, it's not, I don't say it's better, it's not. It gives just a different look. So depending on what you're looking at, what you're going for, mm -hmm. you, can, you should keep in mind, you can also play with the uh, temperature of the occlusion. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's, it gives you a different effect mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. there is no wrong and right for me to do it. It's just different. Oh, so, mm -hmm. so you can have different effects on it if you have have it in mind. Yeah. So um, you, you have a warm color for the occlusion, like like here. And exactly. Can you see exactly. my cursor, right? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So it's, for it's, the shadow, you don't go warm. Only uh, for the occlusion part. Uh, uh for, for example, here the occlusion part, you go really warm. But uh, for the shadow it, itself, no. Not not always, but I mean for the pants, I probably didn't go warm, but. It would work also if I would take the occlusion and paint in some very dark, uh, uh, dark reds into it, but, mm. but very dark values. It would would also work. So, uh, but it's not a rule. I, I, I it's mm. really dependent also on the character. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. on the part of the character. Yeah, um, and I noticed that you paint the highlight uh, with cold color, right? Is that? You're creating a warm cold uh, yeah, contrast the, there. Yeah, the idea there was basically for the green. Uh, I 
I knew at some point, or I was playing with that the background could stay white. There I trying blue, for example, but the idea was maybe it's blue or it's white. And so, uh, like I said mm -hmm. before, I'm not very really concerned about accurate light mode, but what I would try is, uh, you see it on the tail, on the black part, I use some blue on the top mm -hmm. to, to indicate basically the yeah. reflected light of, uh, of, of the sky. For example. Mm -hmm. So I can, I can, we could use also white probably so mm -hmm. very, very softly and gently to indicate that. When I paint the lights, for example, on the jacket, uh, the, the, the light parts, uh, what I do is uh, open up a new layer, usually, uh, making a clipping mask, right? Uh, and, and taking a really bold brush and doing one big stroke, mm -hmm. like, or for example, on the, uh, um, on the on his chest area, the part, mm -hmm. uh, making a bold stroke and erasing everything what shouldn't be there. Mm -hmm. So it's like mm -hmm. painting, erasing, mm -hmm. doing mass painting, erasing, painting, erasing. So mm -hmm. and and then of course each time or very often I. And and uh, now again on uh, what do you see you um, you added another uh, redder shadow uh, reddish shadow, uh, contrasting the blue light you get from the top to make it uh, pop out more I guess. Uh, I think so. I'm not sure. Yeah. <laughs> it, it sounds good. So probably yeah, that's yeah. our. Was the yeah, yeah, just go with it. <laughs> yeah, just go with it. Yeah. And and yeah, and <clears throat> if you if you go back a little bit to the, yeah, to the, wait, um, uh, this is yeah, the end, yeah. Here. So basically, what I want to say is also, what I try to do there is giving the highest contrast or try to give the highest contrast on the face with the yeah. glasses, like yeah. because mm -hmm. that's the place, mm -hmm. this is the place where the people should look at. And a nice little trick is, I really try to uh, make a new layer and. As you see here, I'm, I'm trying to basically get rid of details on the shoes, on the pants. Mm -hmm. I'm basically e eliminating that with a, with a darker tone uh, because what it does, it, it gives the, the character a gradient from top to bottom. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so you have on the head the mm -hmm. highest yeah. contrast mm -hmm. yeah. and get more, a little bit more loose to the bottom. It, it's also, you can also look fall off effect. <laughs> uh, Google it, what it means. and yeah, I, I see that. Yeah. Yeah. This global gradient. Yeah. yeah, so basically you can also throw in some, some stuff and, and, and get loose. And the same for the occlusion, you can see basically on the bottom uh, of an, and on, the, on the floor, there's a blue and beneath his <coughs> shoes, beneath his shoes where he touches the ground, mm -hmm. yeah. it's slightly darker. So this makes the, 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 the character more grounded because yeah, yeah. less light would go in there. Yeah. So it gives a little bit more yeah, it's, uh, depth it's, to it. It's basically, it's physically, I think there's nothing like uh, ambient occlusion actually. It's just uh, because it's just, uh, that's where no bounce light is. It's, and it's where um, it's simplified or stylized um, approach to that, uh, especially for PC games and stuff like that, where, where it's harder to call, um, to, um, to calculate all the lights, yeah, that's, uh, exactly. it makes it more grounded in the whole thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, one last thing I would, I hope I'm in time, but the last thing I would add to it, which would yeah, help, yeah, sure. I I see a lot of um, younger artists who become good at rendering, but then, I mean, it always depends on the style, but generally. They, they, many people tend to over render stuff. What I mean by that over, over render is you, the, you have a character and you don't have a focus. Like the shoes are extremely polished and, and every little bit is so highly rendered. Like every, you can see every detail and every knob and in the face the same. So it becomes you, you paint, you painting the character. It's a bad painting at the end because you, you have no nothing to lead the eye. Everything is full of detail. So you should you should learn to lose some stuff mm. basically. And that's some stuff I sometimes struggle 
uh, because um, you start being to paint and render it tightly and then it looks so nice and beautiful, but mm. you should always basically do all trick like zoom out and look what it does to your eyes and then. Uh, yeah, then yeah, zooming out is very important for rendering. Yeah, totally. And, uh, and that, that's it from my side. And, and I'm really looking forward to, to you guys, uh, what, what you did. So, Thomas, uh, would you be the next? Uh, all right, guys, uh, now it's my turn. I'm using the same character provided by uh, graciously by Erkan. That's oh. the wrong word. Um, uh, uh, yeah, and I start with. I'm doing flats first. No, normally, I wouldn't with something like that when I try to do it quicker. I would just do flats with a thick brush and then work over it and not necessarily do a line work most of the times. Um, yeah, and then also put in a gray background. So as it's like the middle gray tone and then I work the other stuff out from that. Also the character a little uh, lighter and then I put in shadows. And I start with, uh, I, I'm doing a black uh, uh, grayscale painting and then I put in at the end some colors. I ran out of time, so I put in the colors is uh, came quite short then, you will see. Uh, <laughs> and I start with putting in some, it's basically a little bit like this this ambient occlusion, occlusion shadows where I put in uh, this, but it's not really, it's, it's more like drop shadows I put in there because I think it's like, it gives it a little dramatic feel and you get a feeling for the uh, mm -hmm. volume of the whole mm -hmm. thing if you have the shadows coming down from the from the coat for example on the back uh, and stuff like that and yeah uh, might be not that interesting now because i'm just going over it and over it with just grayscales and yeah so don't consider colors yet nothing at all i'm just putting uh, put in form that's the nice thing about doing it in grayscale that you um can concentrate on 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 the values uh, uh, instead of the, uh, on the mm -hmm. you know <laughs> you, you you get rid of the colors and it makes it easier to really get the form. Do you always uh, render in this approach? No, I don't. Uh, the thing is, it's like uh, you've seen the reds I did before. Uh, I do that stuff like that when I want to do something quick. Uh, okay. Um, okay. Because. It's and also if I don't have a lot of references for it, I tend to do it this way because it's mm. uh, easier for me to just concentrate on 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 forms uh, and uh, not really considering much more in the first stages. It's for me. It's like that's also how I start. Like when I do a character, uh, I start like that. I, it's, I I put down a silhouette and then I p paint into the silhouette some lights coming from somewhere and then some textures, and then at the end the colors will come in. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. If I do a more elaborate um, illustration, I might start with a grayscale painting like that, yeah. and, then and then do a do a line work. And then put the colors in there and then render the whole thing. Um, for me, that's more a bit of the the quick way to go around. Um, uh, do you do you use ever uh, the, the smudge tool? Um, uh, sometimes I use it at the end mm -hmm. um, to get, because you get a lot of sharp, uh, I tend to do a lot of sharp edges and everything. You, it's more i think think things can get more interesting if you have some soft edges and some sharp edges and yeah, how i yeah. work a lot of times it's it gets a little sharp and then yeah. at the end i soften it up a little bit more at some parts also to get like you said before um to get the focus more, more on specific points i keep them sharp and mm -hmm. i have some other stuff smudged out or softer uh, that you don't necessarily look at that um, and, and keep the focus more on on the face or something like that Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so if if you keep them sharp, the the edges it creates basically also more contrast. Right? Yeah, yeah, so yeah, exactly. Have, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's also what I'm doing here. I, um, the face, especially his his white hair on the uh, on his neck, it's it has the biggest contrast to the rest of the painting. So there you have some more focus mm -hmm. there, and I will try to keep it lighter than the rest. Um, uh, yeah, to to have people look at the face first. Yeah, and then I'm just using my brushes and paint in some more shadows. 
Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Also, um, and again, going a little bit of, uh, over the fur and at the face uh, and the neck to to come make that come out a little bit more and give that more detail. Yeah. Do Do you think already, uh, or do you start thinking of colors when you? Uh, not really at that stage. It's um, I actually um, no, I, no, not really. I mean, mm-hmm. I do in. Uh, I think about uh, not really with what color it will be, but thinking about how bright the, the jacket will be. I don't know what color it will have in the end, but I think about, yeah, it should be a little bit darker mm. than, than the, the skin tone, but maybe a, little, a little bit lighter than the, the, the pants and stuff like that. Uh, I think about something like that, but not really. I'm not sure yet about what color will be where. Mm-hmm. And now at, what I do there is now I put in some rim lights to make the character come out a little bit more. Yeah. Uh, so it's just, it's a, I had the shadows on the one side that I painted also on the jacket, on the coat. I did put in darker shadows on the on the rim of it. And then I, now I'm painted the very bright um, rim light in there to make him come out a little bit more. Mm-hmm. I really like why, that you have uh... Um, I don't know if it's right what I'm saying, but a looser approach at the beginning. Uh, like you paint loosely, I think, yeah, a little bit yeah. loosely. And, and uh, I have sometimes, um, um, I'm falling always in my own trap to then get to, trying to get too, too detailed at the beginning. And, yeah, that's, and then, I think that's something that happens when you're doing as a drawing first. Mm, yeah. uh, you because with the drawing, it's so easy to put in the details. And when you, when I start something like that, it's I, I, I use a thicker brush and then put in uh, broad strokes for, for a form and everything. Um, and try to get more detailed later and, and working out what I find there. It's also when I, I'm using a bigger brush, I, I paint something uh, and suddenly something appears it's like a little bit like bob ross said it's like i have this happy little accidents uh where i say okay that's kind of cool i keep that in and work it out a little bit more and it makes sense afterwards uh uh yeah so what brushes do you use (laughs) Uh, i have like a ton of brushes Uh, Uh here i'm basically using two brushes um one is from yama europe i've Oh, I like yeah. that brush very much. And another one, I don't know where that's from. It's uh, mm-hmm. uh, the, the Yama one is a little bit like, it has a little bit of a canvas texture, but you can use it in very different ways. Um, and the other one is uh, not really like chalk. It's, it's mm-hmm. kind of hard to describe. <laughs> mm-hmm. Could show you afterwards. <laughs> yeah, uh, maybe we can... Uh, post our brushes in the discourse room because yeah. people always ask that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but a little bit of the thing is, the, I think especially the Jama brushes, I bought them from him. Oh, you bought it. Okay. Uh, then. Yeah, so I, I don't yeah, I yeah. not do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Really, people for, ask always about brushes. Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's interesting. So, uh, what, what, would you, what would you say to people if people ask about brushes? Well, brushes are important in my opinion, but um, it goes with what I said before. In my opinion, if you if you don't understand the form beneath, brushes won't help. Yeah, that's, sure. that's that's true. But I have the feeling um, there are some brushes that make different things yeah. work differently, and and also there are some brushes that work perfect for sketching. Then there are some that work perfect for uh, I don't know for for uh, rendering yeah. details and stuff like that so i think it makes it also it makes a difference in in appearance you can use a chalk brush and it looks very different than when you're using a, a round uh, soft yeah. brush no no i i agree completely i mean brushes are are important there is not like because you can achieve stuff quicker and and better with some brushes and and emulate maybe the traditional media a little bit more but yeah like um if you have the the, the base base for it so the fundamentals yeah, the brushes yeah, yeah. will help you much more yeah, they, they yeah. will they will do their job much better so of course of course yeah you need to know your fundamentals first then you can think about your brushes mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. 
but but yeah I, i'm a big fan of different brushes like <laughs> I, I, oh when... and there just just saying because that's something maybe you can pause it for a short moment yeah yeah that's the player i'm talking about now i added up there because that's something uh color dodge a lot of people hate it because it looks weird and everything but color dodge can work amazingly but the thing is in photoshop uh, color dodge looks like crap when you use it on a transparent layer you mm. should put in like i did here a, a totally black layer set that to color dodge and then with the clipping mask i add uh, i paint in whites and then it, that works great for lighting that's a great tip mm -hmm. because other works uh, otherwise uh, color dodge looks like crap Oh, sorry, sorry again. <laughs> you, you put this layer, this black yeah, there's layer. Yeah, this, this black layer. In this case, I, I normally I would just make the whole layer black, but I, oh, for some okay. reason I used um, the silhouette of him. And then you dodge on on the layer. No, no, and, and I, I set that layer, the black layer, to yeah. color dodge, and because it's black, nothing happens. Okay, yeah. And, and then, then I just put in a, a new layer uh, with a clipping mask to it. Okay, this one. And then I paint, yeah, this one. And in that one, I paint with white or with uh, with another bright color. And ah, then, uh, and see, then you have I the see. color dodge. Uh, and you can uh, still um, erase stuff without getting again to the, ah, see, with the, with the transparency. Because yeah. when you work using color dodge on transparency, it looks like crap. You need yeah, it. Yeah, it needs yeah. to be on on Yeah, solid on color. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But have you tried that in Photoshop? There is one option to turn off this. Um, oh, transparency. No, I don't know that. No, yeah. I don't know that. <laughs> uh, I'll show you later. Uh, on my, yeah, yeah. On my uh, it's what what I do in in color touch is uh, interestingly. Um, I don't know if you, if you know this, but if you have the color touch layer, yeah, and you click on the layer itself, a double click, yeah. then it opens a window, and mm -hmm. two check marks are there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's, ah, that's what I meant. Yeah, oh, transparency yeah, yeah. shapes layer, right? Yeah, and uh, just just get rid of the check mark. And yeah. Ah, okay, thing. okay. That's yeah. good to know. I don't, so I can I can. Oh, that's what. Yeah, okay. What do you don't have to use the, the, yeah, we, the like, layer uh, anymore. We can show it later <laughs> to the people yeah, yeah, because yeah, this yeah. is really important. Because yeah. I don't use the layer color dodge that a lot. I use the uh, linear dodge. Yeah. Add, and if you turn off that checkbox, it looks much nicer. Yeah, yeah, okay. Okay, oh, let's go on. So, till now, it's already yeah, now, now 70%, I'm, still no color. Okay, here, no yeah, color. Yeah, did, that's the point where I realized I should stop rendering <laughs> that and, and put in some colors because uh, time uh, flew. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, now I'm yeah, yeah, putting in colors. I'm, I'm, I think I'm using, uh, 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 what's it called? Uh, color layer? No, no, it's um, not color. It's um, overlay. Overlay. Yeah. Oh, really? It's overlay to color. Okay. Yeah, and um, I use that, and then I just put in base colors. And what I then use is a lot of uh, mm -hmm. curves for gradient, okay. Okay. Uh, grad mm -hmm. gradient mm -hmm. curves, mm -hmm. uh, to to uh, adjust the colors later. And then I go over it again with uh, on the layer in the color layer before, put, try some variations on the colors, and uh, and again more gradation layers. Uh, yeah. Normally, afterwards, maybe if I would try to go further with it, I would add paint over it a little bit more with proper colors, with just uh, as, uh, as a normal yeah. layer, putting some more colors in there, getting okay. rid of mm -hmm. some weird stuff. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I, re I really ran out of time. I realized, oh mm -hmm. shit, I already rendered that for like over an hour. <laughs> so maybe try to get some colors in now uh, last, as a last sort. Um, yeah, and now I'm adding a little some some soft lights with negative multiply. Uh, again, adjusting the colors a little bit more. And also here I go, when I adjust the colors, I go, I use um, gradient curves, but also uh, color balance. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, and then I, because why not? I added some some particles and some, some uh, Unsharpening it and you know oh, all the all the fancy yeah. stuff. You, you painted the particles yourself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and and at the end, I did smudge it a little bit, detail and stuff like that. But mm, now yeah. it's not a, that I see. Nice. Now that I see it, I should have put in maybe a, a little bit of fog in front of the foot uh, of the legs, <laughs> so they don't come out that that much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. it. Cool.
Yeah, uh, cool. I, I like the textures and the pentelly style. Yeah, yeah it looks very so cool. It looks really good. Yeah, the, the thing is, when when doing something like that, I I, I think you lose a little bit uh, when you start with a grayscale painting. You lose a little bit of the color brilliance mm -hmm. because yeah, uh, if you put them over a grayscale, I never have the feeling that they really pop as much mm -hmm. as when you really start with colors. But you could put could paint it in later. Going over it a little yeah. bit more. The thing is, for me, it's like I think uh, also with the reds before I, I painted them the same way like like him, uh, mm -hmm. but I put in some a little bit more work afterwards. And I a lot of times I have the feeling it's like uh, I put in some bright spots somewhere, and then it really pops. Mm -hmm. I don't put make everything bright, and but there's yeah, like yeah, reds, yeah, the ears. Yeah. Uh, you have this back light, so the yeah, subsurface yeah. scattering where the red light comes through, and then yeah, you exactly. act yeah. immediately look there. Yeah, and, exactly. Uh, if yeah, you have and, some focus, it will make yeah. the color even more uh, pop, yeah. even more. Yeah, yeah. exactly. That, that that's that's cool because I think what what can people? I hope that uh, some people can take away that. Um, there are approaches which are for some very comfortable and for some not. And that's why it is good yeah. because you have different approaches. Like, you know, because if, if, you, if you, for example, I, I did, like, I, I start sometimes also black and white, but, but mm -hmm. for me, it was never like, it did, you know what I mean? I'm not judging. It's just like, it was not for me. I didn't feel comfortable that way. Yeah, yeah. Like, like I, I feel more comfortable uh, blocking in the the colors and yeah, then yeah. starting mm -hmm. uh, or, yeah, or something like that. So, um, but no, it's, I, it's I also, have always hard time with starting grayscale and then finding. It's, my it's also for me. It's like with uh, um, uh, because you did uh, the drawing of the fox and we were all looking at it and you were super quick with that. A mm, yeah. Doing a drawing like that would take me forever uh, because and that's why I start. Like again, like I said before, I would draw the silhouette, uh, the rough silhouette, and then paint shadows in and light in, and uh, make it really rough. But that's my my sketch. I don't really do sketching in 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 lines. Mm -hmm. um, lines is are basically a step for me when I really do a high end rendering of something. Then I mm -hmm. do a line drawing, but I do the line drawing. Mm -hmm. I trace it from a rough painted sketch. Mm -hmm. It sounds complicated, might be, but it's the easiest way for me to go around. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. Yeah, yeah what, one thing I noticed here is that um, the material of this leather jacket, it's really rendered uh, really well. And yeah, the material feel is so good. How, how did you render it? I think that's something that comes from using brushes because I, I know how leather really? looks. Uh, yeah, it's it's and for me it's like I know my this brush I used for that one, I know it for I use it for stuff like that, and mm -hmm. then I can because and then, then I can use it again and, and and I know now I put in some little shadows here and and then I get a wrinkle and stuff like that and um, and there are also these small highlights they're done with this canvas brush, and this also helps that gives it this this oh you mean these this, highlights here yeah yeah it gives it a little bit of mm. this poros uh, feeling. Where you have like it, like it's worn out, and you have some spot highlights there, and the rest is dark and and grittier. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's sometimes these are some of the brushes because okay. doing something like that with a just with a flat brush with a round brush uh, that would take some time. Yeah. Because then you have to yeah. erase some of it again, and and so yeah. 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 Oh, and, and the roof sack. <laughs> oh, yeah. These folds yeah. look really nice. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> true, true. And, and and you made the effort and painted the bottle. That's yeah. that's awesome because I was like You got was, rid of it. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I've seen I, it. I, yeah, I, I saw the bottle and I was thinking like, nah, I don't want to render that too. So I just <laughs> just get rid of it. <laughs> nice. So cool. Cool. Really cool. Very cool. I have just one more question. Do you yeah. do you have any any thoughts on Rimlab? How you how you approach them? Do you have any specific thoughts? Uh, it's it's for scenes like that when it's dark. Mm -hmm. I tend to use them for to bring out the character a little bit more to separate him from the dark background. Mm -hmm. uh, to, just to give it's a second light that gives you just more form. It, it informs you about the silhouette a little bit more because otherwise it would you would get lost in the dark. Mm -hmm. And I uh, I think it's. Uh, 
they are it, that's not a very accurate uh, rim light but i also put some rim light down there for the pants just so you could read it a little bit better mm. so yeah. it's not i don't think it would be accurate no, like that no but uh, i think it helps just that's that's a nice thing about when you're doing it as an illustration and doing it in 2d mm. you don't have to think about does it really work because you just say yeah it needs something like that and then you just put it in mm -hmm. Yeah. to make it more readable. Mm. So uh, this is my version uh, of the rendering. I start with the flat colors. So I put all uh, the flat colors on just one layer. And here I'm trying to select the tail alone. I struggle a little bit, <laughs> but then I use the magic wand to select the tails. And what I'm going to do is I paint the shadows on a separate layer, on a multiply layer. And that's also what I'm going to do for the whole character. So I'm separating color and shading. Mm -hmm. Also in a very strict way uh, in this approach. Yeah, you're a systematic, a systematic guy. <laughs> this is actually exactly the uh, 3D uh, approach that yeah, 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 yeah. 3D guys use. I think this approach, um, it's a little bit difficult to learn if uh, for for people who are new to this. Uh, but the advantage is that um, you get lots of flexibility afterwards yeah, yeah. to compose new uh, color scheme and new lighting scheme. Yeah, yeah. But also, if you have to change something on the character, you have to change everything separately. Which yes, makes it a little yes, yeah, yes, exactly. Which can be annoying if you have yes, a lot of yes, uh, but not <laughs> annoying. But it's not a problem in Procreate. Okay, in Procreate, yeah. you can liquefy all the layers together. Oh, that's okay. cool. That's why I use this approach. Uh, oh, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, that's that's smart. Yeah, yeah. Mm. But uh, Procreate also has uh, that problem. If you liquefy a layer, it will become more and more blurred. Mm. So afterwards, you have to uh, draw on it again to repaint a little bit. Yeah, yeah, make it a bit sharper. But still, this allows me to use this approach. Did you have sort for the colors? Did you have uh, uh, what was your uh, way to go along with the colors? Uh, did you? You mean that for the shadow layer? No, just for the base colors. Did uh, you have a, a specific plan in mind for that, like Erkan with the? Oh yes, exactly. Like. Uh, Aircon said, uh, I do try to create some uh, contrast, yeah. complementary color. And uh, here I also try to create some contrasting saturation as well. Yeah. Yeah, you used red and blue, right? So, so. Mm -hmm. cool. And this approach also has the advantage that you can change the color very easily afterwards. Yeah, yeah. You only need to uh, go to the flat color layer. Mm -hmm. And just uh, use a pen bucket. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm so used to Photoshop by now, and and all the little tools. I have a lot. Of, I have a ton of uh, action scripts I'm using for a lot of uh, stuff already. Okay. Yeah. It's like uh, I, I I can't go somewhere else anymore. <laughs> so oh, you uh, have to, you have to show me the action scripts because uh, that's something I never tried about. Uh, like before, like with the color dodge layer, I have that on a, as an action script, so I don't have to do it all the time. Mm. But now I don't need it anymore because you showed me. <laughs> Can get rid of that. You you keeping it uh, see uh, also quite dark below, right? On on his pens and stuff. Yes, yes. Every time when I want to paint, uh, when 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 I want to shade a part of it, I first I shade the big shape. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Then uh, you paint in details. I uh, at this stage, I actually I wasn't thinking of the gradient from top to down yet. Yeah. Sometimes mm -hmm. I put in an extra layer to yeah, create yeah. that gradient. Yeah. Uh, but that j j just now uh, the uh, the pants part you saw it it was maybe just because the geometry makes it mm -hmm. uh, dark on the bottom. Yeah. Yeah. Uh... Um, you using for the multiple layer also uh, the smudge tool, right? For defining if it's softer turn on a plane. Yes, 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 yes. I, I use smudge. 
Uh, and by the mm. way, yeah, the smart tooling Procreate also works better than Photoshop. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's. That, I can imagine that. <laughs> yeah, but 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 still, here in Photoshop, I I I made a smart brush, uh, and it it works still works very well. Yeah. And here I yeah I paint with hard edges, and then I smudge mm -hmm. uh, those soft edges to do the ed edge control. Yeah. yeah, I think one uh tip that very useful is. You should always paint with the biggest brush that you can get away with. That mm. that's how I think of it. Yeah. And yeah, uh, uh, and what color you're using for the shadow? For the shadow, yes. Yeah, uh, just... Here you see that I just use yeah, this color here. Desert, I, I this... go with this color all the way through mm -hmm. because uh, yeah, for the shading you only need to think about the values. Yeah. Uh, the color really doesn't matter here because you can change it afterwards very easily. It's on yeah, one yeah, layer. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so, what are you thinking when you when you can you stop very quickly on the jacket part? Yeah. Or, or more more top view or when you see the top of the jacket? Uh, yeah, I will I will go to the top. Uh, yeah, yeah, over here. Yeah. So. Uh, are there any any thoughts that you can share for um, when you because you 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 painting the folds like you know mm -hmm. uh, what is your thought process? Do you look references up or do you think about okay what what does happen in this area or? Oh uh, yes, um, I did. I can show you quickly the reference that I used. This one here. I did look up for some reference. Here I use uh, the pure ref, and uh, what I'm trying to look at is how these folds form here mm. on the jacket. Oh yeah. Right. Uh, and, uh, some folds are different than the other folds, and then I try to look at the fur, uh, the texture feel of the fur. Yeah. Uh, mm. But I think here the texture on my painting it's not quite nice. Thomas created a nicer texture for the leather I love jacket. Your, I love your folds. The folds are great. Yeah, the, these folds, they look good, but a little bit gen generic, I find. Uh, I think on. they're quite well. I think uh, they're doing what they're supposed to be, <laughs> supposed to do. So they, they, they work very well, I, I think. So yeah, thank you, thank you. Yeah, uh, one thing I can say about the approaches that um, in order to create this kind of folds that look good, you have to paint the big shape first. You have to paint the overall geometry first. Yeah. So yeah. everything should uh, have a hierarchy. The small shapes should live on the big shape and so on. Mm -hmm. I think that's the most difficult part for uh, beginners. And now you're doing the, and you're doing the screen. Yes, I'm using a screen layer to paint the uh, highlight. I, actually, I call that specular reflection right? mm -hmm. in, in the 3D term. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I also paint that on an extra layer because um, this way I can change the color of the specular yeah. layer. Yeah. And then if I do that, uh, the material will be uh, will look different. Uh, but also the color of the light source will look different. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm a big fan of, of the screen layer now <laughs> because, <laughs> uh, to be honest, I, I found I, I tried it out maybe just two years ago for the first time or so, mm -hmm. and before I didn't know actually what it does and, and I didn't care and and now I, I'm, I'm, I, I like it. So I like it a lot. I use it a lot right now. So. Actually, usually I use add more uh, for this kind of uh, specular reflection. Yeah, they add and screen these two layers. They they are actually very similar. They just have different effects for different kinds of uh, lighting. Actually, I, I'll take that back. N now I think uh, for for uh, specular reflection like this, which are not very strong. Oh, my program crashed. Mm -hmm. I use screen mostly. Now, screen works better. And for rim light, for example, add work much better.
you, you'll see that I, I'll use another layer for the strong uh, highlight. I'll use mm -hmm. add instead of screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Add has a much stronger effect than screen, yeah, yeah, so to yeah. say. And you're using a lot of the lesser tool, right? Yeah, and this, this is an add layer. Uh, yeah. Only with add, you can create this kind of strong uh, yeah, reflection yeah. for metal, especially. That's cool. Yeah, I, I use lasso. Well, sometimes I also use the method that Aircon talked about. I just paint with a big brush and then erase those parts, yeah, 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 yeah. which are not like, like necessary. Here. Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. <clears throat> so this is also the screen layer. Yeah, to think of a specular reflection, uh, specular means mirror, mm -hmm. actually. So specular reflection are really just a mirror image yeah, of the yeah. light source. So you and can then, study... And then the roughness makes it more diffuse. Yes, yes. Different materials have different uh, roughness. So that different materials a, have different. A very, look. like you said, a very three D approach. Yeah. Yeah. I also work with Blender. Actually, I don't work with Blender, but I, I learned to use Blender. Yeah. And I'm fascinated by <laughs> all the possibilities. Oh yeah, it's uh, yeah, <laughs> it's great. Yeah, I haven't done much work with Blender yet. Oh, okay. Uh, that's actually. And then you done. finished. <laughs> Yeah, that's uh, cool. I, I like the folds a lot. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. I, I like that. And uh, you you let the uh, the line drawing shine through. At oh some yeah, yes, yeah. mm -hmm. So uh, I'm I guess that was also on good intention. For, for the line drawing, actually, I think uh, it's it would be better to not use line drawing. Mm -hmm. It's just that uh, sometimes I'm lazy. Because if you want to remove the line joint, then you have to fix those uh, empty parts, right? Yeah. I, Sometimes I, I'm just lazy to do yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know what you mean, but but it is interesting because um, the uh, really basically with the with the two two things. I mean, uh, I'm used to line drawing because um, basically you do do a lot of quick iterations, so uh, no rendering. It yeah, would, would be just like. But still, to show some color and some form, mm -hmm. you have to keep the, the liner because that's the element that carries yeah. the whole thing. And basically, if you have the line drawing and really put the occlusion shadow and the shadow, like a 3D approach on two layers on top of it on, on a flat color, it, it does its thing, actually. So to, to show it to a client or whatever, you know, just like the here, uh, it's a very quick way to, to, to show some, of course, it's, it's not for rendering yeah. purposes, but it's, it's useful to, uh, to use those things to quickly indicate some form. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah, it depends on how you want to use that. Right? Of course. And uh, one last thing I want to show is that the option that we mentioned, for example, yeah. this. That's good this uh, reflection here. So this is the checkbox that you want to uncheck. Yeah. Without the checkbox, yeah. it looks very brilliant. Yeah, that's, that's With great. With the checkbox here, it will be dulled down. Yeah, it, it goes into white, just white colors. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's great. Exactly. Great to know that's what I did basically did with the black uh, layer, but don't need to do that anymore. <laughs> yeah, okay. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah Actually, uh, we're done. <laughs> well, that was that was that was fun, guys. And yeah. Great guys. Uh, yeah. I hope I, you. I hope I hope the guys uh, watching uh, you can pick some stuff up. I think the plan is to have a Q and A afterwards after this. So um, we will be there in Discord. See you there.
Hello, everybody, to the Q&A. Welcome, Erkan, Thomas, and Xi. Thanks for your talk. Thanks. Um, direction. OK. Uh, we're going to start off with uh, the first question. Brian Main asked uh, Xi, uh, or asks Xi, how have you adapted your business during the coronavirus shutdown? Not a lot of events do character, caricature, question mark. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's exactly like Pixel. I try to move it online. Okay. Right. Uh, I try to draw people uh, on Zoom. Uh, but it didn't work out. <laughs> okay. So have to think, think of something else. Like uh, teaching, maybe 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 for the people watching uh, who don't know you so well, um, you do a lot of caricature. So you do oh, yeah. a lot of life I, events. I used do... to do. Yeah. I used I used to do caricatures. Uh, mm -hmm. I worked I worked as a Schnellzeichner, so to okay. say. Yeah. But so you... now I'm trying to do different all kinds of different things, mm -hmm. <laughs> just to keep it going. Um, a question for all of you, because we, maybe to explain to the audience, we've, we've kind of tried to, you know, put the three of you together for this talk and try to come up with a, maybe a different format, um, trying to, um, you know, figure out, have, have three artists who, I wouldn't say do the same thing, but have a, a, a similar, or at least on, on first at first glance for very similar visual approach to certain things and um try to come you know like get a little bit of knowledge from each and every one of you and um the way the talk turned out it felt like there was a lot of um new things for each and every one of you in the whole um experience maybe you guys can say something about how because um, we to be fair we, we we had an idea but not really a plan and you guys came up with the plan maybe you can explain what the plan was and how it turned out yeah who wants to start <laughs> you um and i just i don't know maybe Akon, you say something first and then each well, and every one of you just says a little bit about it well it was um i think um if I remember correctly, the, the basic idea was, okay, how can we, can we put uh, uh, three different approach, approaches in one video? Uh, so, uh, and because rendering takes time, and the idea was, well, let's, let's, let's do it basically, uh, we have to do a sped up video, that's the first thing. So, with that, it comes automatically, okay, we, we can't go in depth in stuff. So, basically everybody does his approach so it was more or less um, spontaneous is not the right word but just let 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 it happen mm -hmm. just try it first then we, we look at the videos what we have done and we we, we go over it and we talk uh, and let's see what what comes out so there was not a uh, the idea was basically to have a chit chat about it right and it was more <laughs> Uh, in my opinion, it came uh, it came better out than I than I thought. So I was okay. quite surprised, and 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 I think uh, we all had a ton of fun making it actually. So okay, um, that's good to hear. That's uh, that's a relief for for, for <laughs> us. Not not that it you know at least wasn't because uh, we know how much effort it is to put a talk together and and and, and come up you know with to do all the. All the work we appreciate all the work you put into it and, and uh, you I mean, guys... I, 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 sorry to interrupt you, but i have to i have to give now credit to xi because he took the oh, work yeah. and, and edited yes. oh, the, okay. the, the, the video <laughs> and put it together and sent it to you so basically he he deserves credit for that, that okay well thank you yeah. see so, to the other he needed the, the character <laughs> <laughs> everybody everybody did something yeah true so yeah, that's how it how it came came together. I guess the videos there was there was not not a lot of planning involved. It was right. just okay. Can we do something like what is interesting? Let's do character. Uh, let's do two, three different ways. Let's let's 
make a voiceover and talk about it. What what we what we what maybe we learn from each other, which I certainly did, <laughs> and I'm interested to learn more actually. So, uh, and 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 we try. I think we tried to give. Uh, although it was very uh, like a like a easy talk. I think we tried to give some information about the techniques as well, what, what we use and about the, the rendering process. And I hope that came through. Yes. Okay, here's a, a question to, for uh, all of you, I think. Uh, you mentioned Blender a few times. Do the three of you have previously worked with 3D tools as well? Or is it something specific, specific about Blender that now attracts you to explore the 3D tools as well. I'm not quite sure who came up with the Blender um, approach, but... Well, uh, I'm, I'm working a lot in Blender. Okay. Uh, started Starting this year, but uh, before that, I did work with uh, 3D code. Uh, I also tried some ZBrush, didn't like that that much. 3D code was more like, a little bit more like Photoshop. Um, and Again, I used it together with a key shot because it was easy to uh, to do uh, materials on your model and just have it rendered out in key shots and basically getting rid of the most of the technical stuff and just doing the art stuff. And there was a combination of 3D code and, and key shot that worked pretty well. Um, now, the thing is why I'm using Blender is because Blender is basically basically can do everything and it's free right. <laughs> and it's pretty powerful now especially also with uh with the real-time engine with ev it's uh it's great to design in real time uh and really see what you do when you put your light somewhere and it really works well together and now with all the tutorials you have everywhere it's easy to get into it so i would say it's like it's a perfect time to learn uh, blender now i tried blender years ago and the whole ui and everything was kind of terrible uh, and now with the new version since 2.83, now everybody uses Blender, uh, and it's great. It's it's honestly it's it's uh, an amazing program and it's for free. So that, that's really right. insane. So yeah, uh, I used some stuff before, but now with Blender, it, I really do it way more now. Yeah. All right. You think um, I'm a big Blender fan as oh well. Oh yeah, well, you have two fans. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I even, uh, I use Blender uh, for the last character design job. Uh, Very cool. I, I got, uh, yeah. I didn't, uh, I didn't use Blender to build 3D model. I did uh, build uh, some 3D models, but it was mainly for uh, the assistance for drawing. Okay. Right, for the head turn. It's very useful <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and for, uh, for the lighting as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I haven't integrated a blender in my workflow yet, but still I see a huge potential. Okay. Um, uh, I personally have a very less 3D experience. Uh, the only things which I used in the past was like Google SketchUp to block out stuff for environments, mm -hmm. so to mm -hmm. have a greater perspective and then paint over it. And I mean, I'm desperately want to learn <laughs> Blender, but um, and uh, and I started using using uh, using um, ZBrush, but uh, I have to say that I'm I'm way below beginner in okay. ZBrush. The only thing where I use it is basically. Uh, to, for example, for giving feedback to uh, to three D models, which which I receive, and then I can basically before I do paint overs, I can basically manipulate these shapes, and in that way I can give much quicker uh, feedback to okay. just okay. distort the proportions. So it is a much much better workflow and uh, and Blender. <laughs> Honestly, I ha I have now a, a, a one year old at home and. <laughs> The time is very, there's not much time left for yeah. doing. Maybe it's just an excuse from my side to not do it. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Okay. So it, um... it takes some time, sorry. <laughs> it takes some time, but I also, I worked on a client job and basically learned a lot of Blender with the client job because 
it was needed and that helps. <laughs> All right. Um, well, thanks so much for, for, for the talk and, and for the Q&A. Uh, you guys are going to stick around a little bit, I guess, to answer some questions in the Discord channel. Uh, I think Brian's inviting you for a workshop or something of the kind. I don't know. <laughs> um, you, you check it out. Uh, for each and every one of you uh, watching, if you have questions, uh, check out our Discord channel. There's a lot of conversations going on there. You can ask questions. You can let people know if you appreciated their talk. And uh, we'll be back in a bit. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you. See you soon. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye.